Welcome back, you successfully made it to our fourth section. The previous section was all about learning about Angular 2 templates, about native directives and how components can communicate with each other. In this section we will take the use case of modal dialogues for learning some new Angular 2 concepts. So in our first video we are going to allow the user of our app to select a sensor from a list via a modal dialog which we will create. We will learn about how to style our modal Angular component what view encapsulation means and how we can benefit from it, and also how to establish a two-way data binding using ng-model. Okay, so we now have our sensor list from our previous section, and we would like to allow our users to selectively adjust and add them to be visualized on the dashboard later. As you can see, I've already added a section for the configured sensors below, and so whenever the user clicks on the add button, we are going to display a modal dialog where the user can then adjust the settings of the sensor and then add them accordingly to the configured sensors list. Okay, so as always the first step is to create a new file. Let's call it config modal component. And well, the initial scaffold is the one you should actually know by heart right now. As you can see we have a container and a section for the dialog content and one for the actions. And finally we have also a backdrop which will dim the background behind the modal dialog. Now obviously our modal will be hidden initially so we'll also the backdrop. And we can do this by setting the hidden property of the DOM elements and bind it to a boolean variable on our component class. So far so good. Now we can add some CSS styles to our component which will make it look like a modal dialog actually. Normally what we would do is to include a CSS somewhere in our public folder of our app and then load it in globally. Now this has the drawback as with global JavaScript state namely naming collisions or styles leaking into our components. Instead, if you think about it, these styles belong really to the component itself, just as the HTML does. So it would be really nice if we could encapsulate them in some way. You probably guessed it already. Angular 2 has a solution for that as well. So what we have is a style and styles URL property on our component. Both of them work and behave just like the template and template URL property do. The only particularity is that you have to pass in an array. So I quickly paste in some CSS code which I've written previously, as we are really not interested in those details right now. Next we add an open function, an OK and a cancel function in our modal dialog. And also the implementation of those is quite straightforward, as we simply modify the boolean variable is open. We might also want to know whether the user clicks the OK button or the cancel button and as such we simply add an event to our component and name it confirm and then obviously in our OK function we emit that event. Cool. So what's missing however is the sensor object we want to display on our content section of the modal dialog. So for that we first of all import the sensor interface from our sensors service, which we created in a previous section. And now we can extend our open function to allow the user of our model dialog to pass in the sensor model he wants to display. We also copy the passed in sensor model over to our internal memory variable. Great, so let's scroll up here. And now we obviously have also to add in our HTML part of the model. So let's quickly paste it in. And as you can see we have here two input controls, one for the name of our sensor and one for the description. And what we want now is to have a binding where the input fields contain the data which is already present on our sensor model and also the user modifications should be data bound back to our model later. So we effectively want a two-way data binding. And we can do that using the ng-model directive. The syntax might look a bit surprising initially but if you think about it for a moment, it totally makes sense. As we've learned, we use the square brackets for input values and the round brackets for output values. And since the ng model does both of them, we get this kind of syntax. Next, let's quickly add the implementation of our buttons here, which first of all invoke the OK and then the cancel function. Nice, so we can now add our config model dialog on our sensor configuration component. We again reference it in the directives property. So if you now jump back to the HTML part of our sensor configuration component, we see that on the sensor list, we have an add event, 
which calls an add to dashboard function on our component class and passes on the dollar event variable, which is actually the sensor model. Now we don't actually want to call that add to dashboard directly when the button is clicked, but rather we want to pass it on to our model. And now we can actually leverage the template variables, which we have learned in a previous section. And then let's cut out the add to dashboard function here and rather invoke the model dot open and pass the sensor model onto that open function. Finally, we implement the confirm function on our config model. And there we actually invoke the add to dashboard. That's it. If we now refresh our application and click on that add button, you see that our model dialog opens. And we can also see how the data is nicely data bound onto our input controls. Interestingly, also, if we open the dev tools, we can see how our styles on the model dialog are being scoped to our component and they won't leak into other components. This is something Angular does for us, which is super nice. By the way, this encapsulation can be controlled through the view encapsulation property. So let's quickly jump back to our config model dialog component and we can import that from the Angular 2 core. And then our component decorator has a property encapsulation where we can actually use one of those three options here. As you can see, there is the emulated option, which you have just seen, which is the default one. Then there is native, which is the support for native shadow DOM. And finally, we have the non option, which basically deactivates this kind of behavior. So to conclude, if we then change the name of our sensor here and click the OK button on our modal dialog, you can see how it is successfully being added to the list of configured sensors. Great, so this concludes our first video. We've successfully created our component and we also learned about valuable things like two-way data binding and how to leverage Angular's view encapsulation.